So this is what we're using on the beach. Got a drop shot weight, yeah. Got a hook with a little pink power eye some worm on. And all I'm doing is just casting this out and then I'm going to slowly twitch it back along the bottom. That's it, we've got to give it a little flick out. I'm just going to leave it there for a few minutes and then just slowly twitch it back. So that's going to kick up a little bit of sand and hopefully attract the flatfish. Birds diving there. All you're waiting for is any little twitches, any little any little knocks, just give it a little strike. As you never know, it might be a fish on the end. So every once in a while just give it a give it a little flick. Just to kick some sand up, but I think the most important thing you have is to keep your rod tip low. You're pretty much so it's in line with the beach where your worm is like on the sand. I'm not quite sure where it is. Oh, and it's a flounder. Yep. There we go. A nice size flounder there on the drop shot rig. So I'm going to quickly unhook him. Get him chucked back. There we go. Nice little hook. There we go. That's on the drop shot there. A little bit of ice on worm. We've got ourselves a lovely little flounder. There we go. We'll get this one chucked back, see if we can catch some more. Off it goes, yeah. This here is a drop shot weight. And I'm gonna show you how to attach it to your line. What you do with this weight is, thread it through there to whatever length you want and then to lock it into place just pull both ends and that locks it into place there and the whole point of this is you can have it as close to your hook or as far away from your hook as you like and there you go that locks that into place once again to release it just pull your line down and then it just slides off and that's pretty much how you put a drop shot weight on. Now I'm going to show you how I would tie a hook on for drop shot. Um, there's a proper knot and I like a proper way to do it but I can never remember how to do that so I just pretty much do it the easy way. What I do is I just put my hook onto my main line like that. I double the line over and once the line's doubled over I tie an overhand knot like that and then your hook goes through this overhand knot obviously it's a little bit harder with this bigger hook just for demonstration but it will be easier with a smaller hook so I go through that loop once and then I go through it again like so and then all I do is obviously put a little bit of spit on that for lubrication and then you just pull that knot tight. Obviously that'll be the top of your leader that's connected to your reel at the top there and that leaves your hook free to dangle there. And then on the tag end of this I will just put me drop shot weight. Obviously any length that you wanted to. That just gives it a nice little loop and obviously leaves the hoop loose for a flap around in the tide. You set up just using a little drop shot rig, a little drop shot weight, a little small hook, a tiny little bit of ice on worm. Just plonk it.
want to get it out here. I'm pretty much just letting it sit on the bottom, giving it a couple of little twitches. Yes. So this is a little little coley. I've got the camera on it, yep. Little coley on the drop shot rig. Off it goes. It's literally just plop it out next to the pontoon. Let it sink till it hits the bottom. Once it's hit the bottom, just gonna give it a couple of little twitches. another little coolie there. It's a problem having fat hands. There we go, another little coolie. We'll chuck that one back in. Next thing I want to show you is jig heads. These jig heads come in a variety. Um, all different sizes, different shapes, just get whichever one that suits you. Also come with different hook sizes as well. These ones here are quite small and you can fit little paddle tails on and you can also fit the straight tails on as well. Um, you've got these other jigs, jig heads here as well, which these are two grams and you can put the soft plastic ragworm on or you can put any other soft plastic ones that you like. Yeah, I mean, soft plastics come in all different shapes, sizes and colors. You can get them off the internet, local tackle shops. There's quite a few places that sell them. So with these chick heads, you can either use the soft plastics or you can bait them up with scented worms. These scented worms also come in a variety of sizes. You've got um, the gulp ones, which are quite large. These are six inch or 15 centimeters. These ones here are in the medium, which are 10 centimeters long. Um, you get, you normally get about 20 to a packet. So you can use them on your jig heads as well if you want to. So you're also going to need a selection of weights. Um, these ones here are little cone weights. I like to use those with the soft plastics. Um, I have a few egg weights, and I also just have um, normal jig heads, like pretty much cheap jig heads that I've chopped the hook off, make ideal little weights, especially when you're fishing on the rocks and stuff, if you know you're gonna lose them. Also, there's these soft plastics, and these are little sand deal imitations. Um, on this, I've just got a worm hook, and I've just rigged it on onto that. Another thing that you might be interested in getting is some small metals. Yeah, as you can see, I've used this one quite a bit. Um, I've hammered the mackerel in it. It had a single hook on the end, but I changed it and put a treble on. I mean, you can use a treble or, or a single. Specimen hooks, which are size 12, if I'm fishing for really small species. So I think if you're just starting out, um, even if you just get the basics here, this will pretty much cover you for harbors, piers, rivers, um, rocks and the beach. It's 
flicking out there. Try to sink to the bottom. straight in there oh. so we'll chuck that one back see how many more we got all I'm doing is just click it out Let it sink. I think I'm pretty much catching them on the drop here. If you feel anything at all moving, just strike it out. There we go. <laughs> that sounds a bit better. Oh, it's a lot better. I think with this one, I'm going to have to handball it up. Oh. Yep, there we go. That's mangled me lure a bit, but... Oh. Turn back. I can get it out here, we're going. Let's pop that down there. As you can see there, it's a pretty decent little codling. You're going to want to learn a couple of knots um, for LRF fishing. Nothing hard, just a couple of simple little knots. These are what I use pretty much all the time. Um, the first off is tying your like, small metals on and your hooks. This is pretty much the knot that I use all the time. What you want to do is take your hook, put your line through the hook, like that. Pinch hold for both ends there, and you want to twist this line round six times. Because this line's quite thick, I'm only going to do it a couple of times. So twist your line round six times and then go back through the loop. Once you've got that, hold on to the tag end, simply just pull. That'll bed down nicely. So that's the first knot I want to show you. Basically just trim your tag end off there. So the next knot I'm going to show you is how to tie your leader onto your braid. Um, there's probably a hundred different ways to do this, but this is um, my favorite way of doing it. It's pretty much straightforward and simple. So say this is your braid, you're going to half it and all you're going to do it's just tie a knot so you're going to go through the loop once twice and just pull that tight so you're left with this in your braid obviously you would trim your tag end off here so then you're going to take your mono or your fluorocarbon whichever is your leader and push this through the loop you've just made in your braid pretty much tie it the same as you would tie the hook knot it's going to go around six times I'll just do this three or four on here. Go back through the loop there. And then hold your braid on one side, your mono on the other, and just pull that tight. And I pretty much use that knot every time I go LRF fishing. So I'm just at the bottom of the pier. I'm gonna have a few casts here, see if we can bring anything in. It's gonna be quite hard to get it up this pier, like, but I'll give it a shot. Of a, a little bit of showing. Come on. Oh. So I'm gonna have to drag it up, I think. There we go. Yep. Uh. 
<laughs> so there we go, that's on that little savage gas spinner. Oh, spinner's just popped out. There we go, not a massive one. There we go, that's just on the little spinner there. Make it a little flick out there like that. Let it sink for a couple of seconds. And then start the retrieve. Just doing a straight retrieve on this one. See if we get any takes. So now I'm going to try a sink and draw retrieve. Pretty much a sink and draw retrieve is what it sounds like. Let's flick it out. Let it sink for a couple of seconds. Oh, that was a take there. That was on the drop. I'm just going to lift the rod, wind back down, lift the rod and wind back down. Lift the rod. There we go. Oh, it's dropped it. So we'll wait in there, but it let go. So just keep on going. So I think the retrieve seems to be working at the minute. So I'll give that another go. Whacking it down. If you feel any resistance on the line, just hit it. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yep, we're in. When you're using a light rod, you get an excellent fight off these macro. So you can see there, the rod's quite there. Low down. I've got to try not to let it get a bit. Oh, jumped out. <laughs> try not to drop it. There we go. I have to be careful because I haven't brought a cloth with us. There we go. I've also got this waste bag, which comes in handy for LRF fishing. Um, it's not a necessity, but it, like I say, it does come in handy. Um, first off, it's got these little stringy things that you can clip your nail clippers, scissors, um, various other things. So you've always got them to hand. And uh, you can pretty much fit all your stuff you need for a day's fishing into this little bag here. At AM it comes with a water bottle, so obviously you can fill your water bottle up. That just slots into the side there. Um, in the front pouch, you can just put all your bits and pieces. In here, I normally put my forceps. I've got a spare leader, spare mono, um, also keep me weights in the front, space where to put extra worms and whatnot. Um, also, you can fit all your fake baits in the front. That's the front pouch. Um, in the top here, there's enough room to fit a couple of tackle boxes and a few other bits and pieces. Um, as you can see in here, it has straps to keep everything secure so you can put them behind there 
it just fits in there like that keeps that nicely in place and um, it come with these tubes which i suppose you could put lures in or like anything with hooks in if you, you don't want to get stuck in your bag they just fit in the back and stick to the back there but i don't really use them um but you can fit all that stuff into the back instead if you don't want to put them in you can go in there it also has a little side pouch here um, in this side pouch I normally put a cloth or a bag and um, spare spools they just go on the side there like that so you can actually fit quite a lot in this little bag um, and that's pretty much that'll do you for your whole day's fishing um, on the back here has a couple of pads to keep it comfortable and that just clips around your waist and that's pretty much your set for a full day's fishing. <laughs>